Good evening, everyone. My name is Kyle, and I am writing a series of tutorials on how to make a, a 2D platformer using LibGDX. And this is actually going to be geared to high schoolers uh, learning computer science. And if you happen to be a little bit older and, and you're just learning uh, a little bit of Java, um, this is going to be a tutorial that is going to be uh, geared towards you. So what do you really need to know before getting started on this? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, I'm going to assume only a few things. First, you know your basics about Java. Second, you uh, um, are familiar with um, objects. Now, you don't need to be an expert at inheritance and polymorphism. And if you don't know what these terms are, that's OK. Um, we're going to actually be learning a little bit of object-oriented programming while I while we do um, LibGDX. So this is a really simplified version of how to make a 2D platformer. Now when you keep on going um, you should get more advanced stuff but this is where we're going to be starting out. So we're going to start out with these three files. Actually we're going to uh, in this episode we're only going to be doing these two and we're going to be setting up LibGDX. Now I am using an older version mainly because I am working with high schoolers on this and uh, um, and the main reason is is we don't have access to the uh, um, to Gradle. So if you are using a newer version of LibGDX, um, go ahead and use that. Um, but this and you can actually skip this video completely. Um, but for the purposes of what I am doing in the classroom, I absolutely need um, to, and to do that or need the older configuration. And so we're going to be actually using 0.9.8. Um, at the time of writing this, I believe I saw 1.2 out. Um, and the late, last thing I wrote um, using LibGDX was 1.0.0. Uh, so anyway, when we get started here, what we're going to do is we're going to type in the name of our game. Our name, uh, our name is going to be Cool Guy. And so we're actually going to be making a game called um, The Adventures of Cool Guy. And we are going to be, the package should be a backwards domain name. Now, if you don't have a domain name, um, you, can, you, um, you can try to come up with a unique identifier. Um, but if you're going to be publishing the, if you're not going to be, if you're only going to be publishing the uh, desktop version of it, don't um, just come up with something unique. But if you are going to be publishing um, to like Android or iOS, you probably want to purchase a domain name at least so you can advertise it. It's really, really cheap. Um, it's about $10 a year. So um, just find that. So I'm going to put my domain name here. And then I'm going to put the name of the game. So and I'm going to put it in lowercase. So cool guy right there. Name of the class. This really doesn't matter too much. I just use cool guy game. And I am going to be changing the destination of it. Actually, we'll leave it there. That's fine. So I'm going to be using the desktop, the H, uh, HTML, and the iOS project. That's fine. It generates all of these um, different folders here. And I'm going to click open the generation screen. So once I do that, I see this, and I click launch. So it's going to decompress, and you can kind of see the uh, um, it kind of working. And it creates all these folders here for me. And then it erases the other, the their working one. So we have all these particular folders here. So once we're done with this, we can exit this out, and then we come on in here, and this is Eclipse, and we're going to open Eclipse, and we're going to hit File, and then we're going to do Import. And when we do this, we are going to go to General and then existing projects in the workspace. So what we're basically doing is importing the uh, um, the, pro uh, the the projects that we just created. So select the root directory, we're going to browse for it, and we ended up having it on our desktop. So we're going to click OK, and it's going to search my desktop. Um, I guess I should have defined that a little bit cleaner. Uh, hopefully my computer doesn't let, um, take too long to do that. If it does, I will try to edit this video and 
and then said. Um, but, oh, there it is. So pretty much it found one other thing that I was working on. So let's deselect that. And so we have the, our projects here. So we're going to click on Finish. And we're going to have the projects that we just created here. Now, in this particular version of LibGDX, we have our core files here, the Android, the desktop, the HTML, and RoboVM. Now, if we were on a Mac, as you can see, we're on a Windows machine. So if we were on a Mac, uh, we could actually, using Ro RoboVM, we could actually compile for iOS. We're going to kind of ignore that. We're also going to ignore the HTML um, and Android at the moment. Um, we're going to primarily work on the desktop. And so I am going to open this up. And you can, and you'll see that, okay, there's my package name and I have main here. So I can open this up and you'll see the pu public static void main like you would see in any other Java program. And it has some, uh, it has some really interesting stuff on this. Now, the only thing in, uh, in my course that you'll have to actually change is first you would like to change the title. So I said we were going to make the adventures of cool guy. And we are going to change the window a little bit to 800 by 480. All right. So once I hit save on that, if I click run on this particular one, it will launch the desktop version of it and it works great. But hey, how does it know that it needs to come up with this uh, um, beautiful libgdx default screen? Well, the really cool thing about libgdx is it's you have all these different projects here, but you only write your code in this project here. And you can go into source, and if we look right here, we have the cool guy game.java, and this is all the code that generates the, the picture. So you can see that we create, um, pull on a PNG, um, we create a sprite out of it, and we have all these different um, methods inside inside the class so in the future I'm uh, or in the next episode I'm going to show you guys how to uh, um, create uh, a completely fr uh, fresh sc uh, screen we're going to be doing all of our work inside of one uh, class I know uh, that's not a great way to do it but for the the purposes of this course and for the purposes of getting something up very very quickly um, we're going to be doing everything within this class here so um, hope I will hopefully I, if if you're not in the uh, in one of my classes and you're just seeing this on YouTube uh, hopefully you'll stick around and see what else I have um, and I'm I hope that this is a I hope you guys were able to set this up and, and get this running so 